Hello and thanks for using Tick Boom. For this question we're given the right angle triangle ABC and we're told that um, in vector form we've got two results that we can use. Um, the vector B plus A, the magnitude of that squared is equal to the magnitude of B squared plus 2 times A times B plus the magnitude of A squared and also B minus A squared equals B squared minus 2AB plus A squared all in vector form. So we're told hence, so either using these results that we've been given or otherwise, so using another technique, use vector methods to prove that the midpoint M of the line AC, the hypotenuse, is equidistant from all three of the vertices. So uh, the distance between M and A and the distance between M and C and the distance between M and B are all equal. Now we're already told that M is the midpoint of A to C, so we know those two distances are equal. So it's really about showing that the distance between M to B is the same as those two. And um, the question does acknowledge that you don't need to use these results. It says hence or otherwise. And there are two ways to tackle this. So what I'll do is I'll walk through both. I'll first go through a technique that lets you make use of one of these results. And then I'll show another technique that doesn't require them at all. And I think they'd both be valid for this question. Okay, so to start, I'll just, um, maybe I'll recreate this triangle off to the side just so we can refer to it. So we've got A, B, C, it's right angled. M is the midpoint, we've got this as vector A and vector B, where vector A is A to B, and vector B is B to C. Okay, so really, um, I, I'd say the best place to start in, in terms of using vectors to, to demonstrate what we want to show, I think the best place to start is to consider the vector B to M. Now that vector, to get to B to M, we could go B to C and then C to M. So B to C, C to M. And we know that going from C to M is half of going from C to A. And that's because we're told M is the midpoint. Now, if we think about the vector C to A, we can get there by going C to B and then B to A. So we can rewrite this as B, C plus a half and then go C to B and then go B to A. And that's equal to B, C plus a half. Now, going from C to B is the same as going from B to C, but in the opposite direction. So that's negative B to C plus B A. Now I can expand this. So we'll get B C plus or minus a half B C plus a half B A. And this B C and this B C combined to give us a half B C plus a half B, A, and we can factor the half, B, C plus B, A. Now, at this point, we can square both sides. So essentially multiply B, M by B, M, and multiply this by this, and that um, squaring gets us into um, magnitude form. So we'll have the magnitude of B, M squared is equal to Half times a half is a quarter, times the magnitude of BC plus BA squared. Now, that's equal to a quarter times the magnitude. Now, B to C, we're told is the vector B. B to A is um, the same as A to B, but in the opposite direction. So that's minus vector A squared. And this is where we get to use our result. So that's going to be oops, that's a quarter. 
So now we get to use our result. So it's a quarter times, and we're going to use the b minus a squared result, which was given as vector b squared minus 2 vector a dot vector b plus vector a squared. And that's as given. Now from there, um, we can actually simplify that one step further as being vector b squared plus vector a squared. So we've dropped off this 2 dot a, a dot b and that's because um, we know that a dot b is equal to 0 um, given a is perpendicular to b. When two vectors are perpendicular, when you do the dot multiple, um, you're given 0 and that's from the result of um, basically cos 90 being 0 and when you multiply the two vectors, you get a result that has cos 90 in it and that's um, where that this rule comes from if, if you're not aware. But th this is a general result that, that you should really just know um, and be able to use without having to prove it each time. Now, um, this um, vector b squared plus vector a squared, that we can write as the vector um, c a squared and that's just using Pythagoras. The hypotenuse squared is um, the same as the square of the other two sides. And so um, now what we can get to is that bm, so we um, take the square root of all sides, so we'll get bm is equal to the square root of a quarter, which is a half ca. And um, a half a ca, as we knew before, is cm and am. Therefore, we know that um, the line bm is equal to cm, which is equal to am, um, because they're all equal to a half of the vector ca. So that's the first way to go about it, and that um, way involves using one of the results that we're given. Now there is another way, and I'd like to walk through that because I think on, in the context of say doing this in an exam, um, the approach I'm about to show just for me is the one I'd naturally go to. It may not be the case for you, but um, it's probably worth showing it just so that you've got an extra option. So if I just go to the next page, I'll draw the diagram up again just so I can point to it. Okay, A, B, C, M. We had our vector A, vector B. Now here, to start with, what, what we can do is we can let a m, so a to m, let's let that be some vector, I'll call it r. So let vector a m be r. And if that's the case, if a to m is r, c to m is the same magnitude, we know that, but the opposite direction, so negative r. So say therefore c m, is negative r and let's uh, let the vector m to b let's let that be p so let vector m b equal p so this just will help us in doing some of our vector algebra now if we think about vector a to b we know we can get there by first going from A to M and then M to B. And in the notation I've just written, that is equal to the R vector plus the P vector, R plus P. Now if we think of um, C to B, 
So we've gone from A to B, now let's go from C to B. That will equal, we can go from C to M and then M to B. So the basic idea behind this technique, we, we go to B um, first from point A and then from point C and in both cases we're going via point M. So here's C to M plus M to B is equal to the negative R vector plus the P vector. Or in other words, that's the P vector minus the R vector. <clears throat> now we know that um, similarly to what we used in the first technique, that the A to B vector times the C to B vector so the two vectors that we just laid out, those multiplied is equal to zero since they're perpendicular. Now that means we can take these two results and multiply them. R vector plus P vector times P vector minus R vector. And we know that's equal to zero. So let's just expand this out and see what we get. So we'll get R vector times P vector plus, uh, minus R vector times R vector plus P vector times P vector minus R vector times P vector equals zero. These two will cancel. <laughs> this has a negative, so I'll bring it over. And that gives us P vector times P vector equals R vector times R vector. Multiplying a vector by itself gives you the magnitude squared. So that's the magnitude of P vector squared equals the magnitude of R vector squared. And then we can just take the square root of both sides. So the magnitude of P vector equals the magnitude of R vector. Now, that gives us our result because A to M is R vector and C to M is the same magnitude but opposite direction. Now we know P has that same magnitude, so therefore we can conclude, once again, that AM is equal to um, BM is equal to CM. And in other words, that's, you know, M is equidistant from A, B and C, which is what we were asked to prove. So there you have two different ways of thinking about that. The first way, I think, is the way the question, uh, the person who wrote this question wanted you to use. They've given you these results to try and guide you. But there is another way. If, for example, you were asked this question without any of that guidance, you could use this technique as well and get to the right result. So hopefully you found that helpful. And uh, tick boom.